look at the first question. The first question is define impulse. All right, uh, you have to, uh, you are required to define impulse and only one mark is given. So when one mark is given, define impulse, we straight go to the main point. See, impulse is the change in momentum. All right, impulse is the change in momentum. But, and, and be careful, do not use the word rate. It's not rate in change in momentum. Rate of change of momentum will be impulsive force. Huh? Remember, rate of change of momentum will be impulsive force. So here they are talking about impulse. So it is change in momentum. And for your information, impulse is also equivalent to, all right, see, impulse is M uh, V minus M U. This gives you the idea of change in momentum. But at the same time, you should also know impulse is also FT. Then, which means it's a product of force and time. Now listen. Now for form five standard, you can say impulse is a product of force and time. But for form six standard, cannot. For form six standard, more accuracy is required. Okay. What is the accuracy required is impulse is the product of force and time. And you must say this is the time over which the force is applied. So time is over which the force is applied, all right? You have to say like that, then only you'll get the marks. But the main point, please go for this. This is the main definition, all right? So impulse is defined as the change in momentum. So all of you can take down. Impulse is defined as the change in momentum. You got your full marks, all right? Now just put this in brackets additional pointer for you, put it in brackets. It is also equivalent, it is also equivalent, it is also equivalent, it's also equivalent to the product of force and time. To the product of force and time over which, over which the force is applied over which the force is applied. Okay, so that is that. Now, the second part of the question, the second part of the question is, using a suitable Newton law of motion, using a suitable Newton law of motion, derive an expression which relates the impulse and the velocity, and you're given three marks. So here you have to be very careful, because as I say, Examination technique dictates that you follow the question and you answer according to the question. That means you must answer according to the objective of the question. You've got to follow that. So it dictates that. So here the question is very clear, using a suitable Newton law of motion. So there are three Newton's law of motion. Newton's first law of motion, Newton's second law of motion, and Newton's third law of motion. There are three. So the first one is the one we talk about inertia. The second one is a rate of change of momentum. The third one is for every action is an equal and opposite reaction force. So among these three, you are required to select a suitable one. That's what the question dictates. And then using this one of the, uh, the formulas that you have selected, which you feel is suitable, you got to relate impulse with velocity. Right? You got to relate impulse with velocity. You got to show the relationship. Uh, you got to derive an expression. All right. Okay. So among the three laws of motion, which is the most suitable that you can link it up with uh, impulse? Okay. Uh, you should have selected the second law of motion, which dictates that it is uh, the impulsive force is the rate of change of momentum. So you should have gone for that. Okay. So we are going to use that follow up. So this is how it goes. So based on the second law of motion, all right? So you are, you are choosing, you are, I mean, you are, I mean, you are stating which law you have chosen, huh? Based on the second law of motion, force is equals to rate of change of momentum, all right? But you know, momentum is mv. So subsequently, we substitute that. 
Okay. All right. Now, during this change in momentum, either the mass changes and causes the change in momentum, or the velocity changes and causes the change of momentum, or both can change. So it's up to you to select what you want. So here, I'm selecting the mass as constant. So it becomes dv over dt. So this means the change in uh, I mean, the, the rate of, I mean, the, I mean, the impulse impulse is due to this, okay? All right, okay, now that means we are dictating that this impulse impulse is due to the rate change, the rate of change in the velocity. This is called rate of change in velocity. So rate of change in velocity gave you the impulse impulse. Now, if you think carefully, this rate of change in velocity is also what? What is this also? Give me one physical quantity which is equivalent to this. Uh, that should be an acceleration. So if I were to put acceleration, I'll get MA. Uh, MA is equal to forms. But this is not our objective. Our objective is to relate with impulse. So now what must you do? You take this T, you cross multiply. So you get F dt equals to m dv, all right? Now you introduce your integration sign, okay? And this is constant, so remove that, there is constant force. So the moment you put it outside the integration sign, you are already indicating the force is constant. So only time is subjected to integration. And then you give the upper limit and lower limit. Let's say the time change is from zero seconds to three seconds, so that will be zero. That will be T. So yeah, the same thing. M is constant. So the integration only is subjected to V. So when the time is zero, it is initial velocity. All right, when the time is T, it becomes final velocity. So now integration of this will give you F. Actually, it is T into T zero. All right, which you can skip this step. But anyway, I'll just leave it for you. This will be V into VU, all right? But as I said, you don't need to have this type. Straight away, you can go to FT is equals to MV minus MU, all right? You have done that. So now, what is FT? Uh, FT is your impulse, okay? So FT is impulse, huh? This is impulse. So impulse is equivalent to M, uh, you can leave it as MV minus mu. So what have you done? You have related impulse to velocity. The impulse is related to velocity. So here, you just have to put a semicolon and t is equals to impulse. That's how you solve this question, all right? Okay. 